On the first day of their historic nine-day tour, King Charles and Queen Camilla made their way to Australia, which is a stunning location. Welcome viewers to my channel, please subscribe, like my video and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next update. Australia's rich culture and heritage will be celebrated during the couple's first visit as Queen and King. A stunning light show that featured images from previous royal tours lit up the Opera House for four minutes to mark their arrival in Sydney. In a joint statement, the royals stated, We are really looking forward to returning to this beautiful country to celebrate the extraordinarily rich cultures and communities that make it so special. This will be our first time traveling to Australia as King and Queen. As well similar to Charles's most memorable time in Australia as ruler, the visit is his most memorable abroad visit since being determined to have malignant growth recently. The king is said to be taking a break from his treatment for the occasion, but two doctors are with him as a precaution. When Charles and Camilla last visited Australia in 2018, local marriage celebrant Leslie Curl managed to get close enough to the royal couple to have a conversation. She was dressed in a bright red dress. As Curl passed Charles, then Prince and now King, a gift of a teapot from people further back in the crowd of flag-waving supporters, it was obviously about tea, which is a subject that many people in Britain care about. Curl, who describes herself as a supporter of the British royals but is not necessarily a staunch monarchist, stated, I got the bug after I saw him that time. Curl will be in Sydney on Tuesday to try to meet the British sovereign, who is 75 years old, for the first time since he took the throne. King Charles will travel to Samoa after Australia to attend the biennial Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting with world leaders. This will be his first time leading the organization. This is the Lord's most memorable long-stretch multi-country trip since his malignant growth finding recently, and his timetable has been eased up over the 11 road trip to give rest times during a respite in his treatment. As with any royal tour, there will be organized pageantry and predicable conversation about when Australia might break off ties with the House of Windsor at dinner tables, on television, and online. The agreement is by all accounts that it will not occur at any point in the near future, not least in light of Australia's unfortunate record on passing mandates that are expected for any change to the nation's constitution. The government saw the defeat of the most recent referendum in October as a painful lesson in the cost of holding such a vote and the damage it can cause in a country with starkly divergent views. The referendum was not on a republic but rather on establishing an indigenous advisory group in the constitution. On Friday, in preparation for the royal couple's arrival, Sydney's famed opera house lit up its sails. However, some of the pre-trip conversation has been less than hospitable. Conservatives have rebranded the visit as the the goodbye Oz visit, selling stock including shirts highlighting the essences of the main royals as though they were individuals from a musical gang very nearly separating.